If you live in the bayou, there's more or less two main lifestyle of occupation. One is the traditional lifestyle of being out on the fishing vessel, and the other is working for the oil and gas industry. Our relationship with the oil and gas industry has been difficult at best, that's putting it politely. Um, they came into our communities and built location canals that allowed for saltwater intrusion, and there was no mitigation that went along with it. And so the same location canals that are built are going to allow this oil spill uh, to seep into our communities. And so that's one of the things that they have just done is just totally, you know, destroyed our wetlands. Uh, the other thing is um, there was a concentrated effort to keep our people poor and educated because that way they could manipulate us and take our land. And that's what's happened. And it's not only the below Golden Meadow community. It's every community you go to, they have the same stories, you know, of how they came in. Uh, our people didn't know how to read and write, being very trusting and saying, you know, I need you to sign this paper. I want to drill on your property. I'll make sure that you're compensated. You know, this is a, an agreement between you and I. And in essence, they were taking their land. And so they put their X and then their land was gone. And so it's it's been, you know, such a challenge, you know, to recover from that sort of thing. And so in my research, I came across the name of, I believe his name was Henry Adams, who had asked the judge, why is it that you don't want the Indian children in school? And his answer was something like, well, we have to make sure that we keep them in the dark, because if we don't, then they're going to know how we took advantage of them, because those Indians, they're smart. And so the children need to learn those stories, um, because it's not going to be taught in the school system. You know, it was the, the, um, the judicial system as well as the school boards that intentionally kept us out of um, you know the educational system and so I remember my mother having to go to the school and talk to them to see if it was all right if I was actually allowed into school because in Lafourche Parish you were not there was a separate Indian school so she didn't know if I'd even be allowed into school um, starting school the first year that Indian children were allowed into regular public school and um, and that was a challenging time because there was a lot of name calling uh, we weren't known as Homa Indians there was an S word uh, that we were called and it's Sabin and so it was a derogatory name uh, never did learn the definition of it but if somebody called you that they were not complimenting you by any means uh, kind of peculiar that they had to see what I look like before I'd actually be allowed to attend. And it makes you wonder if I wasn't fairly lighter skin and blue eyes, if I would have looked more traditional, if you will, if I would have been accepted or not. Every time we've tried to challenge the oil and gas industry and what they've done to our communities, we've lost. Uh, and we have tried on many occasions. Um, first with the location canals, like I said, that was built. They'd come into our communities, not having a proper education. We were taken advantage of and lost our land. Um, there was a hazardous waste facility that was built in the heart of one of our tribal communities, uh, challenged them in the court system, and unfortunately didn't come to a, a good resolve for our people. Uh, there was also a gas processing plant that was built in that same community in which they found skeletal remains and we uh, filed suit against them and lost that as well. And so they're a lot more powerful than us, they're a lot more influential than us, and so we're at that mercy too often. But that does not give them the right to not be good stewards with what's happening. You know, they still need to be good stewards of the land and of the waters. Just because you're a job provider, just because you bring resources and income to the community, does not give you the right to destroy it. They are destroying our communities. You know, they have throughout our history, and they're continuing to do it today with this recent oil spill. You know, as they dredge deeper and deeper, there needs to be more safeguards, and the safeguards have not kept up with um, the technology. And so that's why we're facing what we are today. You know, um, they've been quoted as saying that they followed every rule and regulation that there was. Well, if they did and this happened, then the rules and regulations are lax. There needs to be more oversight, and that has not happen. Uh, they're very powerful and they have the money to lobby, you know, to be able to do what they want. And that's pretty obvious that they've just, you know, taken control of the whole area. We have um, 
maintain that traditional lifestyle for generation after generation, just living off of the water. And so my dad is a, um, a trawler, a fisherman, has his own fishing vessel that he goes out on and catches um, shrimp in the May and August season, and then he oysters in the winter time. And so this is something his grandfather, his father did prior to that. And so it's something that they have grown up doing, and I grew up on his fishing vessel. And so it's just something that we have a love of, you know, it's just um, that independence that it gives you, just being your own boss, just being free out on the water, you know, being able to earn a living and providing for your family. He says, when I'm on my out on my boat, he said, it's like Christmas every morning. And he says, people don't understand that. They just see the hard work. And he says, but it's really not. He said, it's a love for what we do.